Hello. Um, All right, hello. Today we'll be listening to the talk Technologies for and Against Digital Sovereignty um, with just two of the three promised uh, speakers, but we'll still have enough academic firepower at the start. We have Professor Volker Grasmuck and Rüdiger Weiss. Moment, 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 moment. Hold on, hold on of the University of Technology, Berlin. And Stefan Lux could unfortunately not make it, even though he has a very cool university. Give a big hand to our speaker, please. Is mic on? Yes. Thank you very much for the friendly announcement. Um, as was mentioned, this is a joint work between me, Stefan Luck, and Volker Grasmuck. And as you may have noticed, uh, Technologies for and Against Digital Sovereignty is a bit of a weird title for a talk. The title is also the same title as a task uh, handed out by the Digital Ministry of uh, Verbraucherschutz, and they wanted a project on digital technology and we sent we handed in a proposal and surprisingly won that uh, claim and today i and my colleague volker would um, shed some light on a couple of uh, aspects of that we have a big bunch of slides and we'll be a bit quick glossing over these but um, we'll point to these and we'd like to thank the ministry that it's, this study will be published in spring and uh, should be visible in more detail um, there are a lot of things um, escalating in 2016 as you've noticed and since we've been looking at the, the whole affair for about 10 years um, there are a couple of things that are as Im important enough to be warranting discussion right now. And uh, one of these is the security of the Internet of Things. And there are positions emerging um, recently that I haven't seen in the last 20 years or so, which caused me to notice that the, the state of security was getting a bit precarious um, relating to, to Microsoft, for example. Um, where, where the situation is a bit more friendlier and some people might not like that in the audience. And I'd like to discuss the sociology implications, how we manage technology. Uh, we can try to predict some technological developments and their effects on society, and we can work um, on, on, on figuring things out that technology allows us how to structure society. But first up, we have to present the technical situation, and that's not that funny. Or how Bruce Schneier presented it, it's a bit like the end of uh, playtime. I usually uh, refer to the talks of Ron Frank, security nightmares of the past uh, millennium. And um, my point referring to that is uh, there's one simple conclusion. Computers can be hacked. If I connect something to an internet, it can be hacked. Connected systems connected to a network can be hacked. Which leads us to the, the conclusion that if we have an intelligent thermostat, um, then that is a full computer connected to the internet, and people from the outside could be interested in that. And again, um, as Bruce Schneier has said, um, there is a big failure of the market. The embedded devices. We have uh, sold in great amounts to small uh, small prices. We'll stick around in that system for a long time without anyone fi realizing that they are attackable systems. So now we have these nightmarish security disasters. Um, 900,000 telecom clients 
flew from the the net because of a programming error due to some real fault and uh, we have to just figure out that there are millions of devices out there that can be used for attacks and I want to point out that you probably don't have to fear a drone crashing into your fridge recently but if your evil evil fridge participates in attack against US military systems then according to the current situation of the law that's an act of war and the US government has the right to react against that and we do have a big trust in the US government <laughs> since uh, decades but that is a point where we need to rethink some things and the next three slides that might not look this bad have kept me sleepless a couple of nights because we we need something like a, a TÜV, like a warranty situation um, liability shift to the manufacturer that can um, prevent us from some hacking possibilities that, that will impede the, the hacking of, of systems. We formulate this as small as possible, but we need a definition of the lifetime of devices and we need warranties that these devices receive security updates during that lifetime. Secondly, we need to make sure that things that cost three, four euros, an intelligent thermostat um, might be used over decades. That's a very quick lived market, so uh, manufacturers will disappear. This is a nightmare. This is not philosophy. Uh, we have had the, the case of, the, of Chinese cameras that disappeared from the market. We just need to, to work around the fact that manufacturers will disappear and systems will be around that we cannot update, cannot make secure. So what we need is a well-defined lifetime. Um, the manufacturer do need to have the motivation to, to choose that appropriately. And we also need the, the security that systems uh, are released as open source if the manufacturer cannot update them any longer. And finally, the third and most critical point, um, because these companies may disappear really quickly, we have come to the conclusion that we need to have a source code escrow of the manufacturer, because if that company goes bankrupt, uh, then there, there needs to be an assurance that the source code can be published as open source and that the community and others have the chance to fix bugs that might still be present. So open source is really a part of personal sovereignty because otherwise we will not know what could happen to our coffee maker. So when you, when you use these devices, and we don't have to worry just about US drones, but we also have to worry about denials of service, denials of service and, and we need some sort of uh, defensive mechanism. Um, and it'll be extremely unfunny when we uh, we have an attack based on our heating system when a, a, a denial of service um, affects the people's ability to heat themselves. So we're coming to the, we're now going to some specific discussions now. So I'm also going to air a little bit about Microsoft. So I'll talk about a security feature by, bypass vulnerability. Yeah. What actually happened here? To the system had the möglichkeit had uh, the integrity checks up to so an attacker that has physical access to a system could uh, violate the integrity of the system and could deactivate secure boot um, prevent the, the validity check in bitlocker and could uh, disallow device encryption security features so basically 
everything, if I'm not mistaken. This was blacklisted, but there are still problems creeping up. Um, for now, I just want to point to that once that there are companies that build closed systems uh, with mistakes that where one tiny packet of data uh, can prevent the security architecture from working at all. Because of that, I want to say that we need to act. Um, because, for example, the trusted computing uh, architecture builds on 2048 bits of key length, which is not enough for long-lived security. So we need alternatives. So I made the last um, recommendation. So uh, Microsoft reacted fairly cleverly to this. So in previous discussions, I've really discussed about this. Um, so uh, if the Microsoft saves the uh, data in the US. And so they've they they realized that was acceptable, and so they made a uh, a cloud in uh, in Germany, but that unfortunately has not uh, has not been successful to this point. This was a a recommendation from the CEO of, Micro of Microsoft. And so we, they, they, they knew they needed a massive uh, data center in eastern Germany. Um, these alternative trust anchors should be a, a possibility for companies to, to not have to trust traditional CAs, and not have to trust the, their government. Um, and that, I think, is a very interesting point. Um, we have made some good um, experiences with um, trusts. Like, for example, I can. Um, jumping into technology, we have technologies that we can share trust. We have zero knowledge uh, things, we have secret sharing things. Those are not just academic proposals. For example, this is being done in practice for the, the DNS root key um, for in, in fun ceremonies, uh, but it, it's working. We, as cryptographers, can invent and can point to technologies uh, that you can use for such applications. Coming to a creepy quiz, Eric Schmidt in 2011 explained they built a technology that is very fantastic, but it's the only technology that Google ever produced and said it's too creepy. We we're not going to use it. You, do you have an idea what that could be? Silence from the audience. I, I also wouldn't have known. Truly. They, what they, what um, reading that, I was a bit weirded out because uh, technology that works great and Google isn't using it because it creeps them out. And but the subject is facial recognition and Google considers that creepy. Because um, Google, um, for example, the, the government can film uh, protests where people are filmed. Um, and uh, are recognized, or festivals at the entrance, you're filmed and your face is recognition, uh, recognized in HD. Um, such technologies that can now be used by secret services um, will later be used in a year by hackers and uh, a couple of years later by normal, the normal populace. In a Russian art project, for example, uh, a Russian artist thought, well, we can recognize any person. Um, so what happened on the internet is on 2chan, people took um, pornographic movies and uh, sex worker pages and 
stalked and de-anonymized uh, people on these pages. Uh, and that was a, a violation of their privacy. Um, this is a, a danger for, for example, uh, homosexual demonstrations, for normal protests. Um, and that is a, a technology where you just have to sit down and, and you will realize that um, it's, it is creepy. And if you look at the current development, then I'd like to, to point to a, um, a brilliant article by Anna Bezelli, who pointed out, that, for example, for transsexual sex workers, anonymity can be life-saving. Um, it's uh, participation in sex work can be uh, met by, by draconian punishments and that in a transsexual context can be even more dangerous and, and punished even worse and uh, yeah because of that we've uh, come to one clear uh, position I don't want to go into uh, um, a political discussion that will go uh, nowhere, but if we want to protect people, then we, we have to understand that we will always lose databases, that even with um, rules about this, we will always lose databases. And because of this, applause. Because of this, we, we, we have to think like hackers. So if, if the data could be lost and people's lives put at risk, then we can't store it. We can't save it. We haven't... Diese rosa Listen oder Sexarbeitregister, die übrigens das letzte Mal unter dem Nationalsozialismus relevant waren, sollte man auch mal vielleicht kurz erwähnen. Gefährten ganz eminent ähm, real existierende Menschen. Shito ist es auch. Such technologies can endanger really living real persons. And they can endanger anonymity. We, we could potentially help there. We could say there are anonymization methods to anonymize people. Um, meaning people go somewhere where they get an, an official uh, document certifying something and the people might the, the people issuing that might not know who they've issued that certification to um, also there's the point um, to disallow the Ausweispflicht uh, the duty to have a, a, a personal identifying document they are pseudonymous at that point um, and basically uh, the, the countermeasures proposed were that you should not upload pictures to social media but there are other people uploading your pictures to social media so anonymous um, identifying documents with a picture are not anonymous anymore and we have to, to figure that out there's also another recommendation if um, masses of data are collected then that's problematic because if, if people cannot um, be advised enough by uh, the courts and the system, but there would be technologies, for example, uh, differential privacy that could help with that. That's a technology that helps gathering statistical data and still maintains some sort of protection for uh, privacy. Um, there's work of Cynthia work of Microsoft um, and it's a very powerful concept. It's a, a very, very beautiful mathematics, not as complicated as, as number theory. Um, and we will provide concrete parameters in our study um, that we recommend for use with differential privacy. Um, we also point to whomever using differential privacy, whoever uses a, who processes personal data should do well to use differential privacy and uh, we just have to give a big shout out to Microsoft they have done excellent work it's 10 years past now and the, the maths is so powerful but not so far away from normal maths it's not it's not mass in development not research maths it's it we can really we, we understand that and we we give recommendations in our study towards using differential privacy 
Finally, moving to the positive things, what can we do with cryptography? What else can we do with crypto cryptography? Um, anonymous attestation is a combination of blind signatures and zero knowledge technologies. If we can combine these two, and I'll come to that later, in trusted computing, we can guarantee that a system has some security properties without uh, giving away the identity of the system. Uh, blind signatures, explaining that again, uh, the magic is that Alice can encrypt a document to Bob to, to sign it. Bob signs the encrypted version with the and with additional knowledge Alice can create a, 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 a signature for the unencrypted version with some extra knowledge from the signature to the encrypted version. Um, and in that case, Bob, who created the signature, cannot de determine which document it was and for whom it was signed. A um, uh, little add, I worked with one of my master's students on blind ECC signatures for elliptic curves for OpenPGP, and he proposed a very nice hack uh, working that into OpenPGP. The talk wasn't accepted, unfortunately, to this, uh, this Congress. Uh, so I just had to sneak that in. <laughs> it was on the Open Tech Conference, and you can, uh, if you're interested, you can check out the, the source code. And, and we are, of course, open for comments, for feedback. And I, I have critical comments on elliptic curves, but there are some scenarios where they can be used pretty well. Zero knowledge protocols. Touching upon them briefly, um, are the idea that we can prove that we have some knowledge without giving that knowledge away. I, I forgot pointing to the dates. Uh, blind signatures was 1982. They were patented, but these patents have expired by now. So please do have a look at this. Blind signatures 82 and zero knowledge 83, and can now be used without. Uh, regardless of the patents, because they have expired. Now, trusted computing. Um, direct anonymous attestation. There's an analysis of Stefan and me um, from, I think, 2004. Um, there are some farther developments. Um, another pointer to blind signatures, identity management. There are great works by Stefan Brands at Microsoft. Do have a look at that. Um, it's maths that allows us to protect people. And that's a thing where I invite people to um, try and have a look at the maths. The maths is pretty uh, understandable and uh, you can really make a change and improve on the world. The final two slides, I'm a great fan of hash functions. Um, last year we had this great talk by DJB and Tanya Lange uh, about post-quantum cryptography and what I took away from that is what I really understood are Merkley signatures based on hash functions and that is fascinating that these are even safe against quantum computing, quantum attacks. Also, we can uh, take some ideas from Bitcoin and the blockchain just to drop that buzzword. And uh, we can use these hash functions as a building block. We have understood that um, even though we have to, to use some quite weak assumptions. Um, so, yeah, we, the, the collision freedom of hashes are a valued, valuable point for us and the the good points about bitcoin is that people are good cryptographers uh, and they they know that they do not know anything and they often use uh, st they often do stuff twice so they hash and hash again which is basically russian space engineering um, it's it's not despectable for me to saying that because they just they know where the weak points are so they, they do it twice for more security and that way they don't have to explain why they do stuff so 
instead they just add some more layers and that's good, uh, a good thing finally this short slide um this is a slide that i told pretty massively to the ministry um we have some software that is relevant to systems so if that software breaks we are in trouble and that is for one true crypt and veracrypt I want to speak about PGP. That's not that nice tool which, with which you can sign things. On that, the entire update management in Linux is built. And if we realize that Linux has completely um, complete control of the operating system market, um, that we, we realize that this is really important because if that breaks away, then the whole world cannot, cannot run updates securely anymore. Finally, before I give the word to Volker, um, who will speak about scoring, which is a very interesting thing. Um, again, I want to point to the words of Edward Snowden. Cryptography contains maths, but it's not black magic. It's things we understood, things we have discussed. We do not have all of the maths behind it. And even I, after 30 years of studying it, do not understand all of it. But we need to see what possibilities there are and politicians cannot guarantee anymore that we're not being listened to. But if we use end-to-end -end encryption, then we're not that vulnerable to dragnet surveillance, but they will have to attack each, every single one of us independently. And uh, that being said, encryption as the standard uh, for standard mode of communication for everything is what we need to do. And I repeat the, the invitation to academics, we need to implement it and we need to actively research it. And for all the people who see social problems uh, related to distributed trust, related to um, confirming things without uh, touching upon the privacy of the subject whose aspects you confirm. Um, there are a lot of things going on in there and there's a lot of room for improvement, so please participate. Applause. So I'm going to try and get through my talk quickly. No clapping. So it's supposed to be 20 minutes of rescoring, but we don't quite have uh, 20 minutes. I imagine it's going to be a lot of discussions after Rudy's talk. Um, so the, I'd recommend the uh, the scoring presentation I'll be doing in the the third of January um, cryptic um, uh, presentation in Berlin. And he's now, uh, I'm asking, what does the stage manager think? Should we go right to questions and answers? We, we actually have time. I, I don't know why you want, you want to do it. We don't need to make a half hour of Q&A. We have a 20 minutes, we have a half hour to go still. So I think we only have 15 minutes left. So one of us is going to start with this, either him or me. Sorry for the horrible start. Okay, now we're going. Um erstmal ein naheliegendes Missverständnis zu vermeiden. Nein, es geht nicht. This is. This isn't about getting tips for the party tonight. This is about statistics. So I must go to where we are right now. Risks. You know, to uh, minimize them and control them is one of the key things of the current um, economy. So we need to uh, think about the future possibilities here. Predictions are difficult, particularly for, um, when we try when they meet the future. 
So someone, either a, a author, a, whether author or physicist wrote this, Mark, Mark Twain or Neil Bohr's, we want to talk about how to make the uh, use the, the the information from the past about uh, to more easily uh, to predict the future. So we know that that things like uh, credit scores and and uh, insurance scores are useful to predict the future. But it's not an easy thing to do to decide whether this is where you can make decisions based on that. So using large data from from previous things, previous events. Uh, so I've used regression analysts to, to, for, fury, for various grades to to see whether I could correlate accurately correlate old data with with what actually happens in the future. So I'll, I want to see if I could easily prove uh, what was what, whether an old old data and a, and data model was what actually worked. Bekannten in der Vergangenheit liegenden Ereignis tatsächlich mit einer gewissen Wahrscheinlichkeit übereinstimmen ist is is that so trying to find out not just uh, whether whether uh, whether it was accurate but how accurate it was and how effective it was so trying to find out if the you could make the, the decision about an, or an individual based on on data how accurate was that and can we make a risk score on a risk score based on that to allow someone to make a decision whether whether we should take a risk with this person and how much how much do we need to take effort do we take to ensure it so normally some of the um, some of these uh, calculation methods are unknown but this is an example from uh, from to describe a score counter in the US so if someone had um, a, a a a check in a, a savings account to become you you become 39 points or 31 points for both and your age is a factor um, and your uh, yeah. Anwendungsfelder von Scoring um, hier beispielsweise aus dem So some of the, the examples of the different um, uh, mechanisms, places that you, that use this information for make decisions. So example, uh, predictive policing uses it as well. Um, um, the risks of, uh, of, of, of tax violations. In China, they use a uh, a, a social uh, social credit system since that they that is going to be required by 2020 to um, that that also is related to insurance and. Die Personenwaage war in der zweiten Hälfte des 19. Jahrhunderts eines der ersten Messinstrumente, das für große so the, uh, verwendet the, wurde. Und so ein statistisches the, the, so weight since 1860 was has been used as a mechanism to uh, to to measure the the risk. And in uh, 2004, there were uh, four authors. Um, uh, they use three different three different um, mechanisms to measure uh, traffic risk weitere Tarifmerkmale hinzugekommen sind mit der Deregulierung des deutschen Versicherungsmarktes Mitte der 1990er. So gibt es zum Beispiel Rabatte für Neuwagen, wenig Fahrer. For example, in traffic there are rebates for, for people with new cars, for people who drive little, um, for people who complete a security tra a safety training. On the other hand, there are uh, add-on charges for old cars, old people, uh, or cars that are being used in Eastern European countries. But the study shows that only few of these uh, aspects are 
are relevant predictors. Since the 19th century, lots of things have changed. Uh, things didn't have IP back then. Now we have uh, computation devices with us at any time with lots and lots of sensors, and more and more are being added as as I speak, basically. Um, social media now on social media we share lots of data freely now and then we have big data cyber and the cloud sharing more data because we can uh, all of the data we we leave behind is being used for scoring um, a change in mentality helps in the 80s there were movements against uh, population countings and stuff uh, censuses and now there are blocks for post-privacy and things like that. And here's a quantified self, for example, where we see the scale again. Here, one concrete example for a car insurance that's called Bonus Drive by Allianz. It's targeted to young people, people who do not yet have a credit or insurance history, and they agree to have their driving behavior measured and receive in exchange rebates up to 40%. Here we see the data streams that a car equipped with that will um, publish, the, the octotelematics, um, for example, uh, builds and runs these systems for more than 60 insurance companies in 23 countries, uh, amongst them Allianz. Um, they add a black box to the card with acceleration uh, sensors, a SIM card and so on. And this, these sensors, they track geodata, direction, braking, uh, turns, crashes, duration and distance of a uh, drive and transmit that to Octo. In addition, a lot of other things are promised, for example, a stolen car can be easily found. For example, in the health, um, so in Generali, had used uh, for a uh, health and uh, life insurance. Um, what's important here? The feedback isn't also given to the uh, the corporation, but also to the individuals, and that will that way they can actually set goals for themselves for health and use the tracker to see how they're uh, approaching that uh, approaching the goals. It's not just about a measurement, but it's also about uh, a, 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 a taxation of the measurements. So gamif gamification is a strategy for this. For example. Um, I, the uh, a Sparkasser Bank in in Germany um, had uh, started a, uh, a a a driver of the month, and uh, and the customers were largely happy with it, and it ended up and it cost about a hundred uh, dollars per month. Haben sind die Nutzer angehalten worden gegeneinander. Um den high score des so people then competed uh, to attempt to to reach the high score of the month. Um, so the a new trend is to uh, use um, uh, Facebook posts to attempt to uh, to get a, to improve the purchase of a car. So. So this is a idea to um, to get an offer from uh, uh, for for insurance. Uh, you, to do this, you'd give the admiral access to your Facebook account, and then the the admiral would use the. Um, uh, your your history and look at it and attempted to find out this the person was uh, was well organized and thoughtful. Die Verwendung von Listen, Verabredungen mit Freunden zu konkreten Zeit und mit Ortsangaben statt using uh, locations and and other mechanisms to determine whether someone was uh, uh, eligible. Statt vielleicht Anzeichen für allzu große Selbstsicherheit. And also using it to measure their their build, the, use their their character data to help them understand about uh, whether you could 
come up with a risk that someone would face. And they attempted to start this in November, but Facebook um, pulled um, pulled their uh, their ability to do this. They wouldn't uh, they wouldn't give uh, Admiral access to the data, despite that actually that the, the, they'd already tested this with Admiral for several months. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the reason for that. Uh, instead of that, um, Admiral has done a small um, survey, um, but it's also, again, using the Facebook login. So uh, the, the reason for it was based on ob 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 objectivity and fairness, uh, because they felt like there, there couldn't be a correlation between the Facebook information and the, and the decision to offer a, uh, a, a insurance quote. Führende akademische Einrichtungen hier aus der Pressemitteilung von Generali. Welche führenden akademischen Einrichtungen das sind, wird allerdings nicht gesagt. And so they didn't believe, didn't believe that I had a, a academic or um, a, a tested me mechanism for doing this. Um, as opposed to Schufa, which is the German uh, mechanism for measuring credit scores, which is, uh, uh, in theory, free from subjectivity. So, and so this is a discrimination chart that attempted to measure uh, the uh, different uh, attributes and how it how it tied to discrimination durchschnittlich 70 Facebook likes errechnet worden based on the number of Facebook likes uh, likes to determine um, whether they were uh, what your attitudes were based on what you you'd actually selected on Facebook or liked on Facebook lässt sich das ableiten Fairness. Fairness. So the scoring was um, was designed to protect the users um, from uh, for being uh, needlessly uh, charged for things. Um, Ein ganz wichtiges Argument, es gibt an important Leute, argument. Kann sich verhalten und andere, die sich bewusst nicht riskant verhalten. Und some people found this risky and some people didn't. Die ersteren quer subventionieren und das ist ja unfair. And uh, we don't want to have the, the people who behave risky, uh, no, the people who don't behave risky basically pay the ones who do behave risky. So that would be a punishment for the ones behaving less risky, which uh, is the argument should be prevented. So, uh, so yeah, punishment payments for some groups are basically forbidden. Moving on to data economy and um, data economy is one of the, the basic principles of privacy and the, the more data we have, the, the more precise scoring can be done. So scoring is basically the exact opposite of data economy. Also the being bound to a purpose of data um, uh, is lost because uh, the, the data in social networks is not being generated for uh, input to scoring algorithm or, or for price determination, but they are used for social networking. But because data is the oil of the 21st century, we see this reuse because everyone is uh, asking for data richness um, and data use instead of data protection. Um, this rhetoric of data protection as uh, innovation hindrance needs to be removed and we need to have a, a clear commitment to um, privacy and to the protection of basic right of the basic right of privacy
in the net. We need to negotiate borders. For example, the Facebook platform policy um, has prevented uh, Admiral, or Facebook has prevented Admiral from reading data for that insurance, um, pointing to that platform policy because of the data obtained for, from Facebook must not be used to make decisions about eligibility, including whether or not to approve or reject applications. Um, the probable background of this is not that Facebook has suddenly become uh, privacy conscious, but because they probably want to use that for themselves. Um, and there are implications on free speech um, bordering on, on that thing. Opt-in is often being called as a basic principle of data protection. Um, here is a cookie banner that is visible on basically any site. Um, Often you see such banners um, where you, just, you can either accept to use cookies because the company was forced to place that banner here, or you can leave the site. Well, we won a lot there. Opt-in uh, uh, opt is, uh, is powerful, but it's not, um, it's not a perfect solution. Uh, on only about 30 percent. Um, privacy by design uh, um, zum Beispiel durch differential privacy wie wir das von Rüdi vorhin gehört haben. So even if data is voluntarily disclosed uh, we need to assure that privacy is still assured for example using differential priv privacy as, as proposed before um, and we, we should have um, independent agencies certifying the data protection of solutions that solutions are actually trustworthy and not just claim to be. Finally, data quality, um, wrong and uh, age data um, should are a problem. Um, all companies that hold data about me need to tell me um, that as the CCO negotiated that for scoring, that means um, probabilities from the six months past need to be disclosed to me um, and I need to in, in detail know which data has been used to calculate a score. Algorithms um, to consumers often have the, the feeling of being entirely transparent to organizations that are completely Intransparent, intransparent to them. And we know algorithms can uh, introduce systematic error and uh, we cannot do anything about it. Merkel in uh, Munich said that her personal opinion is that algorithms should be more transparent um, and uh, her speaker then corrected, they do not want Google or Facebook to to open their crown jewels, but in principle and, uh, well, in the, the big picture, how these algorithms work should be um, published. And there are discussions about the, uh, how uh, algorithms uh, come to result. Uh, there, there should be some sort of um, mechanism to uh, to identify them. But companies say we can't uh, open these algorithms um, because then they're open to being manipulated, and, uh, and then other people could also steal our business model. So this is uh, speaks to a tension between the uh, the. Um, the uh, subprime market manipulation within the U.S. Um, so the uh, users then need to make decisions based on the uh, when, when auditing and da kann man dann geheimes what we demand is that um, algorithms that have an effect on how customers, consumers uh, receive things, these algorithms should be audited in camera, um, behind closed doors, um, in secret, 
and people who create such algorithms have assured me that it is in principle possible to uh, discover how parts of the algorithms work together and uh, to determine more or less if a systematic error is being introduced. Um, with regards to Facebook, I have mentioned uh, drawing borders and the same as uh, the, the European Court has done the same, um, saying that equality should be uh, such a fundamental concept that um, differences should not be used for the determination of insurance premiums. Um, so what we see is that women live longer um, so their insurance premiums should be higher from a, a rational perspective, but it's irrational, but we cannot do it because it would violate the, the equality. So, so as a society, if we hold such values like equality high enough, we can counteract uh, economic arguments. Um, there should also be uh, the possibility to um, check uh, what sort of decisions algorithms have made and to uh, compare it to local uh, logbooks. So if we don't have... So talking about scoring for health, so and so before something is a risk score is is calculated and given to a a, a company. They can only do things when after data has been um, aggregated rather than, than, than separated into different pieces. Lösung, die Daten werden nur lokal beim Verbraucher verarbeitet, also erstmal gesammelt und verarbeitet. So data is um, für den Score erforderlichen aggregierten Form übermittelt. So data that is gathered about by you about users is can only be passed on in aggregated form rather than all of the individual data is pushed on. Um, for example, uh, rather than pass up uh, uh, which for for electricity at that at home, rather than pass all of the data up for all devices, you put aggregated information on 15 uh, minute increments or over a year average averages rather than having to give all of the tiny individual data about individual device usage. Um, so this is sort of data that can be protected with differential uh, uh, privacy, but who decides this? So, for example, in a local bank branch where you know a local um, a local customer, so someone could actually decide against a score. But in the, the, the larger market, we normally do things based on algorithms. So, so what are we going to do now with uh, neural nets and other um, automated decision-making methods? The, the, the idea being that everyone, in theory, can pay for their individual, uh, based on their individual score. When die in den, was ich vorhin unter Fairness Rhetorik genannten when uh, the advantages that I mentioned in, in fairness uh, should become real, when when we have this price differentiation, um, things should normalize. The the minimizers should uh, happen up in the telematic uh, plans and the, the normal users should still end up in the non-telematic tariffs and the, the price will rise accordingly with the result that the poor will pay more for food, for insurance, for, for living. Um, David Kaplowitz has uh, seen that in 1973 and that has not changed until today and that will continue throughout scoring. People who cannot afford a smartphone or a fitness device, who cannot afford a new car, who were raised on bad food, they will pay more and that is going to 
be systematic because uh, the symptoms of uh, being poor are correlated with a higher risk. The last slide, uh, the, the free choice of tariff needs to be assured even for people who do not want to be tracked and scored and um, it should not be the solution to everything but it's a very important step. The assured basic uh, income that has been asked by a lot of people, for example, uh, Siemens boss Joe Kaser, who says that will be inevitable. And there is pause, and with that, I believe we'll be moving to the Q and A. So, we have now ganz unerwartet noch mal six minutes Fragen and Antworten. Um, we have about 15 minutes of time for questions and answers. Please step up to the microphones, and if you are um, walking in the cybersphere, you can ask questions. Uh, there is interfacing. Micro number two. Go ahead. Many thanks for this wonderful presentation with a lot of interesting ideas that we, I've never seen put together. Thanks for the uh, possibility <laughs> to, to give a small uh, question and answer time. So we had some wonderful uh, crypto and possibilities in the first uh, discussion. But there was a question about the manipulation of the platform, or whether something can manipulate uh, something by breaking the platform. So, for example, a toxic platform. Would, would, it, would it make more sense, perhaps, for the uh, that the at the government level, that the um, that mandated or supported the the the, the separation of. Uh, uh, high value systems from potentially toxic toxic systems five minute limit Redezeit, es tut mir leid. okay um and I, what I don't see a problem is, so we have all these great uh, data sets that are aggregated. And so, um, this is the last part of the question. Do we have uh, possibilities to, to combine uh, data sets? Sure. Answer. Um, it is visible that after the, the election of Trump and in, the, in our ministries we have more reflection apparently and we have to say that quite clear and I don't want to do that in a ridiculous fashion. Um, part of our government or and the people within it seem to have a philosophy that we cannot, we can trust the Americans in principle. And these people who held that principle are now starting to to change their minds. And I'm interested to see what happens there. Um, what I've seen is some hardware manufacturers um, have allowed or have been forced to, to allow a backdoor of the NSA. Um, there have been gag orders preventing people from talking about it. The computing industry has tried to, to fight that with Warren Canaries, but this is a point where there is a need to uh, assure system relevant software and uh, for example a core router boot system a core boot system um, should be run in a deterministic public fashion and one of the ways to achieve that is is, is running open source and I, I want to support development in that so, direction. Cyber, bitte. Darf ich noch and the second question, I do not have a solution, pseudonymity, anonymization is being asked for in, in data protection everywhere. It's, we, we do know it's quite easy to, um, to remove these layers of anonymization and I am torn as a sociologist, I would love to, to see uh, to be able to use all of that data 
but I also see the dangers um, and, I, and I, I would like to do that in a responsible way. One final point, differential privacy is one of the very promising approaches in the right direction and we have to look at that in a more concrete way. There are steps going in there, it's not easy and it's not a, a final solution to that problem as I had in the slides we cannot we cannot measure how much trust in privacy is lost and there, there is a some border and in our study we will actually have epsilon proposals for, for the parameters and that was it um, uh, applause to both of the speakers please thank you very much for listening to the English